Professor David J. De Los Reyes, former professor of uh, electrical engineering. Okay, uh, let's proceed. My topic for this afternoon, guys, is uh, a new topic. It's not a new topic. It will be another variation of the solution from the previous lesson. Okay. Uh, this afternoon, uh, we will discuss the hollow cylindrical method if it is rotated along the x-axis in the so-called derivation of the formula of a right circular cone. <clears throat> so this is lesson number 72 on my topic integral calculus on my channel integral calculus subtopic volume okay under the hollow cylinder method applied to a right circular cone meaning applied uh, uh, we will use the hollow cylindrical method and the derivation of the formula of a right circular cone but this time the axis of rotation should be along the x-axis uh, yesterday uh, it's a vertical slice we rotate it along the y-axis this afternoon it sh should be a horizontal slice still under hollow cylinder method but it should be rotated along the x-axis okay uh, let's proceed with the solution figure uh, we bring out the graph of the right circular cone on the cartesian coordinate system y-axis x-axis this should be the right circular cone uh, i configure the right circular cone to be lying down meaning the altitude is actually horizontal uh, horizontal it's parallel with respect to the x-axis so that when we rotate it it should be balanced okay so the resulting diagram now will be the reverse of yesterday uh, now the right circular cone is uh, lying down okay it's a uh, placed horizontally meaning the altitude is placed uh, parallel with respect to the x-axis so this should be the diameter and this should be the radius and horizontally this should be the altitude so actually this point here is uh, with coordinates if we now try to specify the coordinates of the vertex of the uh, right circular cone it should be with the coordinates h and 0 this is h measured horizontally and measured vertically it should be 0 meaning the upper and lower part of the right circular code are symmetrical with respect to the x-axis. Uh, it is important for it to be symmetrical so that when we rotate it, it will just be simply one complete revolution and there is no error. Okay. Uh, this point on the right circular code is actually with coordinates. The value of x is 0, so this is 0, and the ordinate is actually y. The, the ordinate is actually r so the coordinates of this point here is actually 0 and r meaning the ordinate is 0 or the abscissa is 0 and the ordinate is r r is the radius of the base okay h is the altitude okay uh, let's now uh, let us now the uh, uh, draw a horizontal slice. This is the horizontal slice. It is this. The thickness will be dy and the distance of this differential area with respect to the axis of rotation is y. Why? Because it is measured vertically. It should be y. The thickness is dy. For the variable uh, length or height this is variable because as this differential area moves from 0 to R it varies so actually this this is referred to as XR meaning X on the right this is XL so actually the variable length is actually the difference of XR minus XL at any moment okay this is Okay, uh, let us draw the isometric view of the hollow cylinder method. If we try to rotate this one, what will come out will be something like this. Okay. 
Uh, this thickness here is actually the differential area that was rotated one complete revolution. Okay. Uh, this refers to the variable uh, length. Okay. And for the face area, this is actually dy. From the axis of rotation, the, the radius of the hollow cylinder is actually y. It is from this center here up to this. It is y. Then if we try to slice this one now into two and we try to spread out, it was the same as yesterday, guys. Okay. This is the thickness. Uh, this is the circumference because if we try to cut this one and we try to spread out, this total length is actually the circumference. And uh, this one here is actually this, the variable height. So actually to compute or uh, to set up the differential volume, just take the area uh, represented by the cross hats uh, red N, okay, multiplied by the thickness. So it is actually 2 pi y. Sorry for this one, it was a uh, very So this is 2 pi y. 2 pi y times h. To compute for the volume, just multiply by the thickness. So the differential volume is actually, it's the same as yesterday. Circumference times thickness times height. The only difference from the previous solution uh, is actually the variables because it will change variables because we are now rotating with respect to the x-axis. So it should, should change variables. Okay. Uh, let's try to substitute now. Circumference will be 2 pi y times dy times xr minus xl. Okay, we call this equation number one. Why we call it equation number one? For the end time, this is x, this is x, and this is y dy. So actually, actually, uh, we are given differential volume as a function of x and y. Okay, and to bring out differential volume as a function of pure y, okay, we must have to take the relation of xr as a function of y and xl as a function of y okay so what will come out will be a pure differential volume as a function of y without any abscissa so we must have to derive the relation of xr as a function of y and xl as a function of y or oh, this is now the derived relation uh, this is the climax of the solution guys uh, because without knowing the relation of xr as a function of y and xl as a function of y you cannot solve the problem and to bring out the relation uh, just go back to the given figure okay uh, we bring out the big right triangle half half of the circular cone it is this this is h and this is, uh, no, no, this is R and this is H, the bigger one. On the horizontal slice, actually we created another right triangle. Because uh, this point here is actually with coordinates X, Y. So if this point is with coordinates X, Y, this should be X and this should be Y. Okay? Right? So if this is R, this portion should be R minus Y. This is R minus Y. So actually we created two right triangles. The smaller right triangle is actually uh, with the opposite side R minus Y, adjacent side is X. And the bigger uh, right triangle that originates from the right circular code is actually the, the opposite side is R and the adjacent side is X, considering angle alpha. This is alpha, this is alpha. Take the tangent of alpha by using the smaller right triangle. Tangent of the smaller right triangle is will be this side here. All over this. So this is R minus Y over X. And taking the tangent of alpha using the bigger right triangle, it should be R over X. This is R over X. Then try to remove this one now. So actually, after taking the tangent of alpha and equating both the left and right, what will come out will be the correct relation, the unknown relation. Oh, that's the climax of the solution. Without knowing this, you cannot solve the problem. 
then we try to solve for x here, cross multiply. xr will be h times the quantity r minus y. xr now, then try to multiply all terms by 1 over r. Right? So the left hand side is actually xr times 1 over r, this r here cancel with this, what remains on the left will be x. And I will now try to place the proper subscript. This is with the subscript R. Okay. It is actually the variable abscissa of the slope sides, XR. Because we are solving for the equation of the variable uh, slope sides. Okay. XR now will be, so H times quantity R minus Y times 1 over R. So this should be H over R times the quantity R minus Y. Okay. Equation number 2. So actually, we are now given xr as a function of y. Right? And for xl, uh, xl is actually the equation of this uh, line here. This one. The equation of this vertical line. xl is equal to 0. Uh, as you notice it, <coughs> this differential area moves from 0 to r. Okay, but to cover up the total area, the, the fat of this differential area is actually a vertical line. Vertical line. Vertical uh, straight line. And the equation of that is xl is equal to zero. Okay, that's analytic unity. So xl is equal to zero. No more uh, triangles because uh, what uh, we are considering for xl is just a vertical line. Okay. And from analytic geometry, the equation of a vertical line that coincides with the y-axis is xl is equal to zero. Equation number two. Right? So we are now given xl also as a function of y. So we will take equation two and three. We place it on equation number one. Okay, I will try to erase this one behind. Right? So substituting equation 2 and 3 to equation number 1 back here. Differential volume will be 2 pi y dy. xr is actually h over r times the quantity r minus y minus 0. We are following this. Right? Uh, the operation here, uh, this is now 0. And the operation is multiplication. So actually we can bring out h over r in front. So this should now be 2 pi h over r, 2 pi h over r. We got a y here, right? We multiply that by r, so this is r y. y times y will be y squared. We put the dy last, okay? The differential thing. So this is now differential equation. That's our course number three, differential equation. So actually, we now created the differential equation, or uh, differential volume, as a function of y. There is only one variable now on the right hand side, so actually we could now integrate. So integrating and applying the limits, the integral of differential volume will be equal to 2 pi h, I am following this, 2 pi h over r, the integral from 0 to r of r y minus y square plus quantity times dy. Uh, we pass by the different methods of integration and the integration on the right hand side is an easy money guys. The integral of ry dy is equal to r the integral of y dy. So this should be r power formula. This is y square over 2. So this is r y square over 2. Okay. And for y square, uh, it pulls under the power formula. This should now be y cube over 3 with the limit from 0 to r. Oh, it's now just a matter of substituting the limit. So 2 pi h over r. So when y is r, r times r square will be r cube. This is all over 2. And when r is when y is r, okay, this will be r cube. This is r cube over 3. That's the value of the upper limit. Minus open quantity. If we try to place the value of y to be 0, there's a y here, this is a y here. Operation is multiplication. 
So actually, r times uh, 0 square over 2. Okay? So this should be r times 0 over 2. r times 0 is 0. And 0 over 2 is equal, equal to 0. So this is 0. For the second part, uh, y cube over 3, when y is 0, 0 cube is actually 0. And 0 over 3 is equal to 0. So this is minus 0. So actually, uh, the <coughs> application of the lower limit on the resulting equation has no effect on the final solution. So actually, we could erase this one. And, uh, th these are now zeros here, right? So this will just be close bracket. Okay. R cube over 2 minus R cube over 3. So it will be equal to 3 R cube minus 2 R cube over 2 times 3. And this will be R cube over 6. So actually this will be R times R cube is actually R times R square. 2 times 3 is actually 2 times 3. Then try to make some considerations. Okay. What will come out? These two here cancel with this. The one at the bottom. One R at the numerator cancel with one R at the denominator. So what will remain will just be simply pi R square H. This is all over 3. So the general formula for taking the volume of a right circular cone is actually one third pi r square h cubic units. So as you notice it, whether you are using a uh, or horizontal axis uh, rotation or vertical axis rotation, okay, as long as you set up your relations correctly, what will come out for the volume will still be the same. So I will uh, repeat it for the last time before I go this afternoon. Volume is actually one third pi r square edge for a right circular cone. So whether it is rotated with respect to the y axis or with respect to the x axis, the resulting derived formula will still be the same. It is one third pi r square edge. That's the significance of the topic this afternoon, guys. Okay, uh, good afternoon, Los Angeles.